There's a lot of people out there that tell you if you eat the same thing over and over and over again, eventually your body's not going to even be able to recognize the food that you're eating. Okay, we develop like an immunity or some kind of just ability to not recognize that food anymore. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of truth to that, but we can circumnavigate this whole issue if we just have an understanding or a fundamental comprehension of what's happening inside your body when we do eat the same kinds of foods over and over and over again. So if, for example, if you eat chicken and broccoli and chicken and broccoli and chicken and broccoli, to an extent, eventually your body's going to get tired of chicken and broccoli. Sure, there's a nutrient thing we have to look at there. We need to get all the nutrients in from other foods, but it actually goes beyond that. It's more about the immune system and more about your gut bacteria. And I just want to make sure that you're getting the most out of your foods, so that you can get lean, so you can get the body you want, and so that you can build the muscle that you want too. So let's go ahead and let's break it all down. You're tuned in to the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. New videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos throughout the week as well. Please go ahead and hit that red subscribe button, and then I beg of you to please hit that little bell icon. A lot of people are joining our notification squad. If you hit that little bell icon, it turns on notifications, so every time I post a new video or do a live broadcast, you don't miss a beat. All right, so let's get an understanding of what happens when you eat the same kind of protein day in and day out. So first thing we have to look at is our bacteria within our guts. And I know it's a boring, exhausted subject, but I promise this is a little bit more exciting. You see, our gut bacteria, we've got billions and trillions of bacteria. We, got, we don't even know how many, really. Okay, the fact is that's a very important part of our immune system. It's a very important part of our fat loss system. It's a very important part of our enzymatic, our hormone system, everything. And when we eat one particular food, it grows one area of our bacteria and deprives another area of our bacteria. And if we eat another food, it can grow another area of our bacteria. So it's all about having a diverse plethora of different foods. So that begs the question, well, when we're on a specific kind of diet, like a keto diet or any other kind of diet where we're limiting certain foods, are we preventing ourselves from getting the right bacteria or feeding the right bacteria? Well, let's go ahead and let's take a look at a study that broke this down a little bit. So there's a study that was published in the American Journal of Microbiology took a look at test subjects that ate a lot of what is called RS2 starch. Okay, this RS2 starch is usually like a, kind of like a potato starch. Now in this case, they found that when they consumed RS2 starch in copious amounts, they had a big proliferation of eubacterium, okay, a specific kind of bacteria. Now that was interesting, but what they found is that they had a massive die-off of other kinds of bacteria. So they found by not only feeding more of one specific food did it grow a specific bacteria, it actually caused other bacteria to die off. Now, of course, this is with starches, so not necessarily apples to apples when we're talking about proteins and things, but it still does show us that when we eat specific foods, it grows different areas of our bacteria. Now, why does this pose a problem? Well, because if we have an imbalance of bacteria, we have a big increase in what are called lipopolysaccharides. And these lipopolysaccharides go into our bloodstream and they trigger immune system responses. They trigger inflammation throughout our body. But they also prevent the activation of cyclic adenosine monophosphate and these other things that allow us to burn fat. So yes, literally speaking, and I know people bag on me for saying literally, but this literally does happen, because you are eating the same kind of food consistently and not getting a full spectrum of other nutrients, you are potentially causing your body to turn off its fat burning mechanisms. Now let's break it down a little bit more because we can hypothesize this entire thing with proteins too. Now this study took a look at starches. Starches obviously have a bigger impact on bacteria. Okay? They're broken down into sugars and that feeds bacteria. But proteins to a degree break down and feed bacteria too. So for example, if we're eating one specific kind of protein, one specific kind of food all the time, we are going to feed one specific form of bacteria and allow another form of bacteria to die off. So for example, eating some protein from beef might feed one kind of bacteria, eating some protein from chicken might feed another, having some pea protein might feed another, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really important when we look at the gut bacteria. Now, a lot of people will tell you that rotating your proteins is more about the amino acids, that we need to get amino acids from different kinds of protein to make sure that we get a full spectrum of amino acids. I call nonsense on that. Here's why. When you eat any kind of protein, whether it's from a veggie source or a meat source, it is deaminated. What that means is it breaks down the protein into amino acids. All those amino acids collectively go into a pool, for lack of a better term. And within this pool, your body can pull from it what it needs. So if it needs all amino acids, it's gonna pull from that pull. If it needs one or two amino acids, it's gonna pull from that. 
So we break down proteins and put them into one just universal area. We don't get specific proteins from specific things and directly feed. We don't eat steak and it directly goes and feeds our quad. Okay, it goes into an area where the body can use it. So don't worry about that. It's about the gut bacteria. But the other big piece we have to look at is food intolerances. When we do eat the same thing, we can and we will develop food intolerances. And the whole autoimmune community knows about this all too much. Eating the same thing over and over can trigger what is called an IgG or even an IgE response. So it can trigger all kinds of immune responses that trigger inflammation. This inflammation, of course, leads to the famed leaky gut, which I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole because it's controversial. But what that means is we have inflammation within our gut that is causing larger particles of protein and larger particles of food to get into our bloodstream when they're not fully digested. And what happens there is the body has no choice but to attack them. Now, when I say attack, I don't mean that you're going to fall flat on your face because your body's in an all-out war against things. I mean a low-grade inflammation that's making it so that the protein you're consuming isn't actually getting to work. So if you're just eating chicken and chicken and chicken and maybe a little bit of beef here and there, you're going to develop some kind of immunoglobulin response and it's going to cause a problem. You need to rotate your proteins and that includes your protein powders especially with things like whey, when you are also not only getting the same kind of protein over and over, you're getting the different immune response from the dairy too. Eventually, you're not going to have the same effect from whey protein as you did when you first started using it. Now, let me break down a quick study that is really fascinating. There was a study that was published out of the Mayo Clinic, okay? This is legit stuff, that took frozen sera from 1946. So what that means is like plasma, frozen blood, et cetera, okay, from 1946. And then it took modern day, Sarah, modern day blood, modern day plasma. And what they did is they took regular gluten, regular wheat, and they tested both samples with the wheat to see what kind of immune response there was. We all know of celiac and gluten intolerance, right? So here's what was wild. The frozen Sarah from 1946 didn't have that much of a response to the gluten. Like very seldom did they see any kind of celiac issue or anything like that. But the modern day blood, the modern day plasma, with the same wheat, saw four times as much celiac response, four times as much autoimmune response. What gives? It's the same gluten, the same wheat, but frozen Sarah from 1946 versus today. What that shows us is it's not necessarily the wheat that's the problem, it's us changing. Because we've consumed so much wheat over the last 50 years, 50, 60, 70 years, that our bodies have changed and our bodies have developed an immune response to it because of the overconsumption of wheat. So not only does this happen in a lifetime, but it also happens generationally. We are changing. Our bodies are saying, no more wheat, right? So this begs the question once again, does this happen with proteins? Of course it's going to happen with proteins. If it happens with wheat, there's nothing super special about wheat that's gonna make it happen with wheat, but not with something else. Perhaps we just understand that we can measure celiac disease, but maybe there's undetectable diseases or undetectable autoimmune issues that occur from the overconsumption of specific proteins. Rotate your proteins, okay? This is again, why I recommend using whey and then also switching over to animal sources, then switching over to collagen, then switching over to pea protein. And for those of you that use a ton of whey protein, now might be a good time to switch over to pea protein. And just for those of you that are watching this video, just so you know, I wanted to go ahead and give you guys some special pricing on Sun Warriors pea protein. They're a big sponsor of this channel and it's a perfect place for me to mention it. So if you guys wanna check them out, there's a link down in the description and gets you a special discount on a full spectrum pea plus hemp protein blend. So when it comes down to getting some kind of protein powder that's different from whey, but gonna give you the full spectrum of amino acids that you need to build muscle and burn fat, you're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure you check them out. You wanna rotate through, it's something that I do. So I'll go a little bit of period of time on whey protein isolate, then I'll go the bulk of my period of time with pea protein, then I'll go off of protein powders altogether for a little bit of time and really just try to go with my clean animal sources as much as I can. Then I'll rotate back through to pea, back through to whey. I always rotate through. I'd say the bulk of the time I'm using pea simply because it gives you a, a little bit more of that gut bacteria feed that I need. There's a little bit of some starch in there. So I feel like that's good. Anyway, just you wanna rotate them up as much as you possibly can. So we don't wanna develop an immune response. 
Okay, we want to make sure that we're constantly rotating through and constantly switching it up as much as we possibly can. Even if there's not a ton of research backing this up, we do know that to some degree we have an immune response. So switch it up, keep it fresh, and that way you're not going to develop a nutritional deficiency as well. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.